In the name of our triune God, who is community and love within God's self, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. David and Goliath. What lessons do we have from David and Goliath? You know, I really sort of like the bigger they are, the harder they fall. But in truth, it's hard to make many positive Christian moral arguments starting there. So we'll start somewhere else. David has some special skills. His superpower is bringing down really scary animals. And he has confidence in this, protecting the sheep from the lions and the bears. His secret weapon is the slingshot. Goliath has threatened the community. He's out to destroy the people of God. Goliath thinks he has more control if he fights one-on-one, -on -one, as the only way they can defeat him is more like ten-on-one, right? No one's ever beaten him one-on-one. -on -one. But David realizes he has a secret weapon for one-on-one -on -one battle. And so David tells Saul, let me try. Saul tries to dissuade the boy. When David insists, Saul puts his own armor on David. And David can barely walk from the weight of it all. So he takes the armor off. He gathers his secret weapon. And David remembers what is at stake. And he calls on the name of the Lord who Goliath has defied. And as we know, David's aim with the slingshot is true, and he delivers the community, the people of God, from what seemed certain defeat. In our, this morning's gospel, it seems that Jesus has a superpower too. Actually, it seems... If we follow the stories, Jesus has many superpowers. But in today's gospel, Jesus' superpower is to calm the storm. And Jesus does this just to show off, right? No. Interesting, though, interestingly, though, it seems he doesn't feel any danger, right? He's asleep in the back of the boat. Jesus calms the storm to protect and calm the community of disciples, those people who will eventually become the church. And so Jesus acts to protect the community, much like David acted to protect the community. In the last 15 months, we have missed community. This community of faith has worked hard to stay connected. It hasn't been easy. We have missed one another, and we've missed worshiping and learning and eating together. Worship online is not the same as being together. But we've also learned that worshiping online is better than not worshiping at all. But we need community to make this worship thing work well. We need community in our journey with God. Brother James Kester of SSJE says this about community. The heart and example of Christian community, whether that be household or parish or monastery, 
is the heart and very being of God. Christian community is the heart and very being of God who is community. We are meant to live in communion and community with one another as we follow a God who is first and foremost community. Now, I don't know about you, but it's been a little while since I have been able to focus my powers and slay a giant or calm a storm. And while I want to protect and serve this community of faith, I feel a bit short on superpowers. Brother Lucas Hall describes work this way, everyone, including Jesus and Martha and Mary, has been called to some fruitful but very ordinary work. The work that we do is not an end in itself. Our daily tasks, even very good, important ones, are not themselves eternal. And so our tasks derive their worth from how much they facilitate our encounter with Jesus, the eternal living God. We gather to worship because it is important. Many of us would say essential to our relationship with God. I've talked before about the necessity of sacred community. We need each other as we journey with God. I'm reminded that several years ago at at an annual parish meeting when Joyce Grubb was your senior warden. She took one of the bulletins and counted up the people who were listed as participating in Sunday's worship of two services. And then she added the people who were involved but weren't on the bulletin, like all the members of the choir, Sunday school teachers, all of the members of the altar guild team or flower guild that might not be listed. She came up with the number 70. It takes, it took 70 people to make two Sunday services happen pre-pandemic. Everyone has been called to some fruitful, ordinary work. But if that work enhances or supports our encounter with Jesus, it is anything but ordinary. Which is to say, we have some people in our midst whose superpower is to prepare the altar for worship. And we have some people whose superpower is to arrange flowers for worship to remind us that God is revealed in beauty. And those same folks break down the flowers after the service and give them to people whose superpower is to take those flowers to people in the community who are sick or shut in or grieving or celebrating a birthday or an anniversary. We have people in this community whose superpower is reading scripture. We have some super voices and we have missed them as we have missed a choir and singing together with them. There is a rumor 
that the choir may forego the usual summer break and have a special reunion on July 4th, which happens to be a Sunday this year. We have people right here in your midst whose superpower is helping form our younger members, members to know themselves as beloved children of God. We have ushers and greeters whose superpower is hospitality. In fact, everyone has a ministry, whether they know it or not. And everyone has a part to play in raising up our worship to God. Thankfully, we are at the point of re-engaging many of our ministries. And that means it looks like it's time for you to dust off your capes and focus your superpowers. You may have been or may be contacted soon about being scheduled for ministries that maybe you've participated in in the past. Please reply promptly that you are ready to soar. This August, we'll have an opportunity for you to find out about the many ministries it takes to make Sunday morning happen and all the other ministries that allow this community to make a difference in the lives of those who gather here and to make a difference in the world around us. Our tasks derive their worth from how much they help and enhance our encounter with Jesus the eternal living God. Our community, this community is absolutely packed with superheroes whose superpowers make something amazing happen. Together, they bring the living God into our midst. Amen.